Hello everyone and welcome to our engineering video on the Canoe J1939 trace window. My name is Hans Christman and I'm your host for this brief session. I've prepared a little configuration in which a couple of nodes will communicate and they are simulated within Canoe. So I just double click that little configuration file. This then starts Canoe. Of course we have to start the CAN option as well as the J1939 option. I OK this, Canoe will start with an empty trace window. When we now start the measurement, the simulated nodes will start communicating and what they tell each other will be seen on our trace window screen. It takes only a couple of seconds, like five or six seconds, and then we can stop because everything we need is now to be seen in the trace window. I scroll back up and start the list from the top. We see a lot of CAN frames here in different colors, and then we eventually hit something called a J1939 frame. Now, some of you may not even see that, and I can tell you why. Look up here, you have the predefined filters. If I click on that, it opens up, and here I can choose what kind or types of events I want to see on my screen, on my trace window, and which not. And I have to check on <clears throat> here these two check marks for the J1939 observer. Then you will see the J1939 frames. I close this window again. And if we look at the payload, it's 14 bytes, which is by far too much for a CAN frame, isn't it? Because any old CAN controller would erupt in error frames if it saw a payload larger than 8 bytes. Now, from that, we can assume that this J1939 frame is a fake. It's a construct, a construct of something that on the pure CAN level would be called a segmented transport or transmission of data. As we can see on the right-hand side in this column, J1939 interpretation, we see some grayish-blue stuff here and it starts with a BAM and then a sequence number one, two, three, and so on. And another BAM starts intermingled with the other one. And also a sequence number one and two. And we assume that this J1939 frame is constructed from the data in these sequence packages of the segmented transport. Now to get the proof for that, we just right click our J1939 frame line and then go to the context search and go for the option previous J1939 transport protocol from the same source. And it jumps up to one of these BAMs. It's not the first one, it's the second one. And now we've got the right one. The second one is responsible for this J1939 frame we saw in the beginning. If I again try to prove that, I right click this first line here, BAM, Again, go to the context search and look for the end of the J1939 transport protocol. Then it immediately skips down to exactly the line just before the line with this J1939 frame. If you mark both and have a look at them, well, we can see they have identical timestamps, which of course would be nonsensical on a serial system. You cannot have two events happening at the same time in a serial system, do we? No, of course not. So from this we see that this segmented transmission via broadcast announce message and then the sequence one and the sequence two are then put together to that virtual construct of a J1939 frame. Now you have learned how to work with the context search. Now let's go into that column J1939 interpretation. In this column, all the events are shown that have a significance with regard to the J1939 protocol. On the top, we see network management with all the address claims made. And there we see what nodes are in the system and what addresses they claim. That's the green stuff. Then eventually we've hit this grayish blue stuff, which we already know from our experiment at start, that this is transport protocols or segmented transmissions. If we go down, we see a request frame here. So this request frame is there to request another parameter group to be transmitted from another node. If we go further down, we eventually hit a place where an accident happens, like this one. There's a request made, and the node requested can't answer. 
it says I can forward this data. And this is this red ink. So this is a negative acknowledge, so to speak. It's, it's like I couldn't do it for whatever reason. Now this is a very telling column with regard to J1939. If you would like to have another column which is not yet there, we just go to an existing column, right-click its header, and choose the field chooser. This little window opens, and now I can insert other columns, like, for example, the J1939 sequence diagram. You see, you can let it drop in any place you want. And now I have inserted this J1939 sequence diagram. Now this column contains a lot of numbers, and it's a good guess that these are network node addresses. In most cases we have just one number, but in some rare cases, if we scroll down, we have a very special situation, like this one here. We have two numbers in that column, and between those two numbers we have an arrow. Now this is a directed transmission, and it's going from node with address 52 in this case, to the other node with address 0. And in all those lines where we have only one number, these are transmissions by the node with a number, with this address, but it's going everywhere. It's a global transmission. It is received by everyone. Let's check on this. We have a column already there called send node. We get our field chooser again. Well, let's get another column for receive node and put it right next to the send node column. Most of this receive node column is empty. Only in rare cases we have a receive node called by name there. And it's exactly in these cases where in the J1939 sequence diagram column we have this arrow between one address and the other address. Now it's fair to assume that the send node is the 52 in the diagram and the receive node, the engine 1, is the 0 of the diagram. Now you have two times the same information. One time in a numerical fashion, and these numericals are the node addresses. And in these other two columns, like send node and receive node, the information is there with symbolic names. Now what's the difference between those? Well, these symbolic node names will prevail even if a network management act Activity will reorganize the numerical addressing. So these numerical addresses are not fixed. They can be changed by network management, but the node names, they are fixed. Now let's get to the next topic. And this is represented by this very intelligently looking funnel with glasses. Now if I click on this, a little screen opens at the left side of our trace window. And here I see that I have stop filters and pass filters. Just to show you how they work, I can drag and drop an event from our trace window display onto, for example, the pass filter. And then it's there, but not even active yet. I first have to set this check mark. And now look what happens if I set the check mark. All the display is reduced to only this type of event I just drop there. If I take this event and drag and drop it back to my trace window, all the rest is back again. And this tells you that this is not a filter in the sense that data is abolished or taken out of our ring buffer. It's only abolished from the display and it's only a temporary thing. It's only for your eyes. Your display view is filtered. If we right click here and say add condition, you see there is add events and add variables and then comes a line, a separator line, and Below the separated line, you have a lot of J1939 related stuff. Now let's, for example, take the network management. Set the check mark again, and you see all the display is now reduced to the green stuff, which is network management, as we saw in the beginning. We might as well say, okay, I add diagnostics. Then so all the blue stuff is added. That's new. You see, diagnostics is blue. And if we choose to add more, for example, proprietary stuff, then a request frame pops up, which asks for a proprietary parameter group. So everything related to proprietary parameter groups is now added to the list. And this is how you can fashion what you want to view on your trace window. Also, 
we would like to stop something. Like for example, all this nasty grayish blue stuff of the segmented transmissions called transport protocols. So I can also say on my, under the stop filter, add condition and then insert this extended transport protocol. And now all the transport stuff is gone. And I'm only seeing either prominent groups that involve only one CAN frame, or if the payload is larger than eight bytes, I see J1939 frames, as we have seen in the beginning. Now for clearness sake, I will clean the slate here again. I just drag and drop everything back into the trace window again. And then we have again our trace window as we had it in the start at the very beginning. Now I go and take a DM01 message. That's a parameter group called Diagnostic Message 01. And it carries on board all the active diagnostic trouble codes. Also, it governs the lamps on our dashboard, like the MEL function indicator lamp or the red stop lamp. And if I set the check mark now, you see, bam, all others vanish and only this kind of diagnostic manage, uh, message 01 is shown. So it's from the transmission. And the transmission has the numerical address 3. Now I can refine this a little bit. I can say, by double-clicking it, I would like to change the address of the sending node to, for example, 0, which would be engine 1. If I want to see engine 2, okay, I change the address to engine 2. And you see, in these little dialogues here, you can change everything that can be changed in a meaningful way. Nonsensical options are not offered. They are either grayed out or not there. But this is how you handle and refine your pass filter or stop filter settings in these analysis filter section of your trace window. Now this is about all I wanted to show you. Let's briefly recapitulate what we just did. We learned how to use the context search within the J1939 trace window. Also, we learned how to add columns to the J1939 trace window and thus enhance the data interpretation of J1939 events. And finally, we got to know the J1939 analysis features and analysis filters and how to handle those. Thank you very much for watching. Be well, be safe, and until the next time.